Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with another painting video. This time we're doing our second of the new 40k Demon Print models. I plan and told to have five of these miniatures and do a generic one and then one for each god specific. So we've already done the generic one and added that into my Night Lord's Force. Now it's time to do the Nurgle one and add that into my Death Guard Force. I really love these new Demon Prince models and this one was very kindly sent to me by Games Workshop. So big thank you to them. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna have to pick up the other three myself and I get stuck into them fairly soon, especially with the new world leaders around the corner. I just wanna say a huge thank you to all of my active patrons. Uh, before I get started into the video, without you guys, I wouldn't be able to keep the lights on or the cameras rolling. So it means the world to me that you guys stick around month after month and support me on this crazy adventure. If you're on the fence about joining my Patreon, some of the benefits you do receive from that are a private Discord server where you can join me and over 140 other people um, chatting about a hobby on a daily basis and getting involved with special events. You also get access to an extra video a week. That means 52 extra videos a year are available to all my Patreon members. So check out the links below and get involved. All right, guys, let's get painting. I've been really looking forward to painting up this particular Demon Prince because I really wanted to do one without the wings and with the big gnarly kind of Chaos Space Marine backpack. And um, I just think he's so menacing looking. I decided like, cause I'm gonna have five of these miniatures, you only get one sword and one ax variant. Um, so obviously two of them will have swords, two of them will have axes and this guy, I'm just gonna make him really brutal and just have basically bare hands. So the model will spray black and give him a zenithal spray of Corey Seer. A uh, nice dusting to help with the contrast. And then we started with Plague Bear Flesh and we're gonna apply this to all of basically like the painted parts of the armor panel, if that makes sense. So it's like this guy is wearing a bloated suit of power armor that he's burst out of when he ascended. So we're trying to get all of the flat panels of the armor done with Plague Bear Flesh and avoid all of the trim. Um, avoid it just because he doesn't need to be green, but if you hit it at this stage, it's absolutely fine. We're gonna be painting over it anyway. So. Don't be overly cautious at this stage. And I would try and avoid hitting the skin. But once again, it's gonna get a couple of layers of paint anyway, so it doesn't make too much of a difference. And I started painting my Death Guard with Plague Bear Flesh and working it up to the Death Guard green, and I really like the result. A lot of you guys seem to enjoy that video as well, so I'm gonna follow through with this, and make this Demon Prince match in as close as possible. So after the Plague Bear Flesh has been applied, we're gonna put the first coat on the skin and we're gonna go for Igros Dunes for this and apply this to all of the soft skin on the miniature. So he's got a lot of horns and stuff, so um, watch out for those. But he's got his big bulbous neck showing behind his head. Make sure you get the Igros Dunes in with all that. And then of course his big tail. The skin on this model was the one bit that I struggled with just a little bit. I wasn't 100% sure what direction I wanted to go for because I painted a lot of Nurgle Demons before. They were bright and vibrant and green, but I couldn't really make this skin bright and vibrant and green because then it would be the same as the armor and then it would just be a bit of a nightmare. So I went through a little bit of a different recipe here for skin. Um, I think it turned out okay. Let me know in the comments at the end if you do like the skin that I did or if you think I should rework the skin a little bit. Black Templar was then used for all of the loose cabling on the miniature. So there's these random cables connecting his chest to his power armor or from his back into his like weapon ports on his arms and stuff like that. Just for a go around and break up all those with a bit of uh, Black Templar contrast. After that, we're gonna move over to Volopus Pink and we're gonna use this for his cloth. So he's got a, like, say, a big loincloth and then he's got his uh, rags going over the top of his head. I really like this look because it reminds me of Rodigus. So I'm gonna keep the colors the same. You'll match it with my Death Guard, you'll match it with my demons. And it's just gonna be one colossal Nurgle force. And I really like that this pink, uh, like how this pink sits next to the green. It's a really nice extra touch of color. It doesn't seem to detract at all. Yeah, I think all of my Nurgle miniatures from now on will try and incorporate some of this pink where they can. I did forget to do the tongue, but you'll notice when we jump to the next step that the tongue will magically be done with Volibus pink as well. And um, although they get base coated the same with the same contrast, they will get pulled in different directions with the layering later on. So that's totally fine. Now it's time for the Balthazar gold stage. So this is where we shall be uh, base coating all of the trim. This took about half an hour, maybe even a little bit longer to do because you, you got to be careful and there are so much trim. So do take your time. 
I know it's not the funnest part of painting the miniature, but uh, the result of it being done uh, really does make it worth it. I know a lot of people complain about the trim on miniatures and I absolutely understand where you're coming from. It can slow down the painting process immensely, but when you get it all done, it does absolutely change the, the look of a miniature. And I don't remember ever finishing a uh, trim stage and thinking the model looked worse. So I think just buckle on and get it done. I think it's worth it. So some lead belcher was then used on all the metallic parts. So basically it's just all the chains holding the uh, skulls on his belt around his waist and stuff like that. That's about the only silver that is on this miniature. Now you could of course substitute some of the gold trim that I did for silver. So if you want to, it's belt buckles, shoulder pads, the skulls off the backpack. If you want to change up the metallics go for it then i applied agrox earth shade over the entire miniature this is what i used to shade down my death guard and like i said i want this guy just to be a big version of a death guard so i'm going to paint him up the same so same shade i know it looks kind of messy now and this is it when it's really wet and it looks kind of crazy but just give it a few minutes to dry and once it's dry, it is a really nice place to work up from. It's a dark, dirty, grungy miniature. It actually looks kind of cool like this. I would, If you were in a pinch, you could leave it like this. But I like it to be a little bit brighter. And this is going to sound weird, but a little bit cleaner. So now we're going to go in and layer up the armor. So we're just going to go straight for Death Guard Green. And layer up all those bits we got with the Plague Bear Flesh as the base coats. As you can see, I'm now taking my time a lot more being careful not to hit any of the other parts as now we're in the kind of layering highlight stages so we're not going to be painting the entire parts we're just going to be doing a couple of touch highlights here and there so if you make a mistake it might show up in the later processes so yeah do try and take your time and this is another issue with the trim having to paint around all of the trim now is a bit of a pain but like i said i think it's worth it as much as we complain. So here is the uh, layer done on all of the armor. From here, we're gonna start working on that skin. So like I said, first of all, we're gonna kind of block in the shapes of the skin with Plague Bear Flesh. Right now, it's too dull, it's too dark, and I can't really work with it from here. So I'm gonna start with adding a Plague Bear Flesh, or a Pallet Witch Flesh, apologies um coat to the skin just to brighten it up a bit this is by no means where we want to leave it this is it's going to turn the skin almost white which you look at nurgle demon skin um on demon princes and stuff it does tend to be this kind of sickly pallid white so that's what i'm kind of trying to go for so once the uh Pallid Witch Flesh has been applied to all of the skin. We are going to go in with one of the new shades, and that's the Mortarian Green. Mortarian Grime. Mortarian Green. Grime. Right, the second time. So we're going to go in with the Mortarian Grime paint, our shade, and apply that to all of the bits that we just did, that Pallid Witch Flesh color. Like I said, the new shades are quite thin. You can do two coats if you want. I stuck with just the one, just to darken it up a bit. And add that green tinge to the white. I think it worked a treat. And from here, we're gonna do something that we very rarely do on this channel. We're going to mix a few paints together. I'm gonna mix Pallet Witch Flesh with Nurgling Green, and then I'm gonna layer up the skin. It's about 50-50 mix. And obviously make it as darker or as bright as you want and just add more or less of each color get the tone that you're happy with but i just wanted it to basically be that sickly white with a touch of green going through it that's all i was going for so i mixed until i got that uh the color i was happy with and then i layered it up so he's spending a lot of time around his face he has very little face showing but it is a key part of the miniature something people will uh, lock onto and pay attention to so i want to spend a little bit of time make sure those lines are nice and crisp Okay, from here, we're going to start working on the horns and all the bones. So Zandri Dust was the first coat. Like I said, I'm going to layer up all the horns in this miniature. And there's quite a lot because he's Nurgle. Or just chaos in general. 
and then he's got about 60,000 skulls hanging off his body in various locations so you want to go in with a quick layer of Xandri dust on those they've obviously gotten quite dark with the agar third shade um, and I just want to make them pop a little bit more I actually took a break from painting here. I don't know, I went and got some lunch or something. I should have gone straight into Yushafti Bone on the bone, um, but I came back and kind of couldn't remember where I was. So I started working on some of the other parts like the metallics, but uh, I will do a Yushafti Bone stage later on on the skulls and bones. If you want to do that stage now, of course you can, but it doesn't really make much of a difference. I just like filming, finishing whole stages as I'm working. So we use Lead Belcher now and went back over all the metallics layering it up. I, if you've watched a bunch of my videos before, you'll know that I'm a huge advocate of using silver as the last highlight on all the metallics on a miniature, whether it be gold or silver. I think it blends them together really nicely. It makes them share similar tones and it's something that just looks really good on uh, gold parts. just makes them pop but on like a normal highlight it's not like we're trying to paint the entire flat part I've been calling it touch highlights because I'm literally just touching the brush on some of the sharper points as I'm going along I don't know the actual magical painting name for that technique if it even is a technique but you know what I mean I hope uh, screamer pink is used uh, to layer up all the volupus pink so it's just the fabric parts on his loincloth and his head scarf hat thing and this is what I mean about the idea of using the similar contrast for base coating, but then you can pull them in different directions when it comes to layering. So I'm using the Screamer Pink here to layer up a cloth over the Volibus Pink. Obviously, I'm not going to use that on the tongue. I want the tongue to be a different color on the fabric and the tongue to be the same color. So you'll see how after I've used this, I'm going to go over to Pink Horror, which is quite a bright pink, and I'm going to layer up the tongue. This helps because there's not a million different tones throughout the model, undertones if you will, but a tiny touch of pink horror is really going to help change the uh, the color of the head hat thing and his tongue. getting happier and happier with this miniature as I go along. This is that Yushapti Bone stage I was talking about, which you could have done after the Zandri Dust. It's just the last highlight on all of the horns, teeth, and skulls across the entire miniature. So I'm going in very carefully at his teeth now. And of course across his horns. I also painted the pupils on his eyes, well just his eyeballs in general with a bit of shafty bone so I could throw some contrast on it in a minute and um, just to brighten it up a little bit as it's a little bit dark from all of the other contrasts and stuff we've been using so far. And this is the color I'm going to use for his eyes. I'm going to throw some Iron Jaws yellow contrast into his eye sockets. which will give it a beautiful uh, sickly yellow color in there. And with that, we have a finished Death Guard Nurgle Demon Prince ready for the battlefield. This guy was uh, a joy to paint, a little complicated at times when it came to my skin tone. I'm still not 100% sure if that's the tone that I'm happy with or whether I want to change it up. It'll be a lot of effort to change it up, so let me know in the comments what you think. But when it jumps up to things like the face, I think it looks pretty cool and I'm pretty happy with the result. Okay guys, and there we have it, one Nurgle Demon Prince ready to be fielded alongside my Death Guard forces. Had a blast painting this miniature up. I like the way I matched the armor in with my Death Guard infantry, so he's going to sit really well inside the army. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give it a like. If for some crazy reason you're not already subscribed to me, it would mean the world to me. It took two seconds out of your day, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to check out links to my Patreon stuff, that is also below. Have a great day guys, and I'll see you in the next video.